Well, hello, and thank you for joining me once again. Where today we're dealing with some more vagunary from the um, priests of the or the high priests of the Church of Anorexia Vegana. For about ten years, they've been telling us, "Oh, yes, but uh, red meat, though, you shouldn't be eating that because." Uh, red meat causes a buildup of a substance called TMA, and those that eat uh, diets rich in meat also experience proliferation, so they say, in a reductionist way. In a particular species of gut microbiome, that uh, then causes the transmutation of the TMA into something else called TMAO, and then they say the TMAO is pro-inflammatory and uh, carcinogenic and will shorten your life and all this kind of reductionist, completely pseudoscientific uh, crack pottery and nonsense. So I've dealt with it before in terms of what they've got as a bunch of associative data, which doesn't actually show a relationship between the consumption of meat uh, and, and actually any deleterious health outcomes uh, long term Anyway, and even if it did, that would only be associational because it's epidoodly moodly mology and just nonsense. But anyway, a new study uh, has come out. Uh, new studies show. So let's deal with what new studies show with regard to TMAO, shall we? Let's crack on. What fun. Well, here we are. Uh, the paper is called An Expanded Genetic Code Enables Trimethylamine Metabolism in Human Gut Bacteria. There you go. Uh, published in the American Society for Microbiology very recently. Good. Let's have a look at the abstract, shall we? Cardiovascular disease has been linked to animal-based diets. In other words, via association and not at all convincingly. And, and it's just the actual uh, raw outcome statistics in terms of an absolute sense mean absolutely nothing anyway. So really, no, that the first statement there isn't even true. There isn't even an association. But anyway, even if there was, it would only be an association. Um, so animal-based diets, which are a major source of trimethylamine, TMA, a precursor for the proatherogenic compound, which again hasn't been established, Trimethylamine N oxide or TMAO. Mm, so that's what the, the vagoons have been telling us for a while. Human gut bacteria in the genus Biophila have been genomically um, tested for their signatures, I guess, and they have a genetic code expansion that could enable them to metabolize both TMA and its precursors before it even ends up being oxidized enzymatically to TMAO by other species of bacteria. So it's all about getting the right balance of the right bugs in your guts, which tends to happen if you eat an appropriate uh, species-specific diet for Homo sapiens sapiens. Okay. Anyway, uh, we uncovered evidence that the biophila demethylation pathway is actively transcribed in gut microbiomes and that animal-based diets cause biophila to rapidly increase in abundance. Well, bugger me. There you go, boys and girls. What I've been saying basically for the last couple of years, don't worry about it. Your gut microbiome will adjust to your diet and look after you appropriately. Yep, there we go. Nice. Cardiovascular disease occurrence and biophila abundance in humans were significantly negatively correlated. Mm. These data lead us to propose that biophila, which is commonly regarded as a pathobiotant, may play a role in mitigating cardiovascular disease, in fact. So bad gut bacteria, bad ones, say the bigoons, actually good. Mm. So once again, the vagoons are 180 degrees out of phase with logic, facts, and indeed reality. Once again, excellent. Um, human gut microbiomes have been shown to affect the development of a myriad of disease states, but mechanistic connections between diet, health, and microbiota have been challenging to establish, which is researchers speak for we can't do it. Okay, the hypothesis that biophila reduces cardiovascular disease by circumventing TMAO production offers a clearly defined mechanism 
uh, with a potential human health impact. But investigations of biophile cell biology and ecology will be needed to fully evaluate these ideas. Uh, anywho, so that's basically what this paper has gone ahead and done. They've started that process. They've looked into it. Uh, here's the canonical view, the production of TMAO, and here's what's actually going on to the right of that. You can look at that in your own time. But pause the video, have a good look if you like. Uh, basically, what we're suggesting is that the biophila genus do increase um, quite vastly in their proliferation, their numbers, uh, in people who eat meat-heavy diets, and so that actually counteracts the activity of the one species that they're talking about that would have produced the TMAO and basically circumvent the problem entirely. So it's all a hypothetical problem, as usual, with these vagoons, unsupported by any actual data, as usual, but here is some actual data that completely debunks their ridiculous nonsense. Um, so yeah, have a good look through this paper in your own times. It's 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 pretty pretty good. It's 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 pretty exciting stuff to look through and to see what they've done here. Let's just have a quick look at the uh, discussion. Okay, so this survey, in other words, this the study here of published microbiome sequence data uncovered evidence that bacteria in the genus Abiophila use genetic code expansion in the human gut to produce a TMA methyltransferase. Okay. We hypothesized that this mechanism could be used to compete with other TMA utilizing processes, potentially decreasing the production of TMA. AO from the proatherogenic precursor trimethylamine. To explore this hypothesis, we re examined additional publicly available data to determine whether this naturally occurring mechanism for TMAO attenuation is correlated with cardiovascular disease. In a recent study describing the gut microbiome in atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, G et al. reported that biophila is one of the 20 most abundant genera, or genre if you like, in the samples examined for this project. Their data also show that the abundance of biophila is significantly enriched in the microbiomes of individuals in the healthy slash control group, numbering 187 individuals. Compared to the cardiovascular disease group, numbering 218 individuals. Mm. Second, in a study describing a rapid diet-induced change in the human gut microbiome, David and co-workers reveal that biophila significantly increase in abundance in response to an animal-based diet compared to a plant-based diet. Mm. Finally, in a study detailing the transmission of atherosclerosis susceptibility via gut microbial transplantation, in other words, sticking poos up your bum from somebody else, uh, Gregory and others show that in mice, so what then, with certain taxa have increased TMAO levels and develop atherosclerotic lesions, and postulate that this is a microbiome-dependent transmissible trait. Great, I'll pass it on to the next mouse that I am discussing, uh, Mrs. Mice's health uh, and and uh, and diet with them too. Anywho, that said, Biophila is one of only six taxa that are significantly enriched in both the cecal and fecal microbiome of the healthy group, compared to the mice that developed atherosclerotic lesions. Well, great, as I say, I'll pass it on to the, to the king of them, to the, the Mises, uh, so he can pass it on to his people, his Mises. Hmm. Anyway, the observations we report may challenge the widely held idea that members of this taxon act exclusively as pathobiotants. The role in the microbiome and human health may be context dependent and their potential to mitigate the impacts of animal products on cardiovascular disease disease warrants further study. So there you go, basically what I've been saying all along for several years, which is, as I said, your gut microbiome will adjust to what you eat. It will look after you if you look after it by feeding it a species appropriate diet for 
for Homo sapiens sapiens, that is obligate hypercarnivore, as established very clearly via the both nitrogen and carbon isotope testing that has been done on human skeletal remains throughout our 350,000 year history on this planet. Uh, it, it, it again reinforces what I've been saying for several years, which is we know more about the surface of Mars for sure than we do about the microbiome and the interactions between the various different species and the different balances between things. And this reductionist, ridiculous kind of nonsense that these um, severely vegetated, <coughs> excuse me, severely vegetated vagoons are putting forward to basically misrepresent both facts and logic and reality to the public needs to stop and we need to, I, I guess, really come only to me for for information about what's good in the science, frankly, because studies show that my channel is the only one that knows what it's talking about. There you go. Catch you next time uh, when we'll cover something quite different. But anyway, the TMAO idea looks like it's pretty well dead in the water or indeed in the guts. Mm, good. See you later then. Ciao.